What's up, guys and girls? How's everybody doing today? We'll just pop that on the outside. I don't need to hide the mic wire. We all do up. I'm thinking, uh, oh, y'all are starting early. Cool. What's up? How is everybody doing this fine Friday? What do you have going on this weekend? Me? I'm going to head to Atlanta to the Fox tomorrow. And, uh, Ever heard of Boz Skaggs? Well, you know, y'all may be too young to know who he even is, but looking forward to hearing him play. It's gonna be gonna be fun. Should I just drive my truck or chance sit and drive the M5? I think we may I think we may have to take the M5. It hasn't been out of the city limits in like a year, so maybe it's time. Whew. Sorry, I'm out of breath. I was on the other end of the building. Speaking of which, it sold this week. So what does that mean for me? Well, we're leasing this part of the building back for about six months, and then we'll have to move into a new studio, which doesn't exist yet. <laughs> it's going to be a heck of a six months. Mm. All right, let's turn around and start with whatever I may have missed last week. All right, um, I do remember Paul asking me a question about a, uh, a 2004, I think it was a Polaris 400 by the old change procedure on it. And if memory serves, that one has uh, an old tank to the side of it. And then you also have to drain the actual bottom of the uh, engine, engine cases as well. But the majority of the oil is in that, uh, that, that side can or that side container. And if you pull there, there's a little screen on the inside of the line going up to the engine. And if you pull that, clean that screen, then you have to reprime it. And the way to reprime it is to pinch off the vent line at the top of the uh, the oil tank that's going to your intake box. I don't know why they do this. You're supposed to pinch it, run the engine for about 10 or 20 seconds, release it. You should hear pressure escape, and then you're good to go. So to answer your question, Paul, as long as you didn't pull that lower hose and clean out that um, that screen, you shouldn't have to do that part of the procedure. Just drain it and fill it back up. Not that big of a deal. All right, uh, Donnie Rowland had asked me, eh, how's it going, Johnny? Donnie Rowland had asked me, after riding my 2019 TRX 420 for a few minutes and then, and then tried to restart it, it will not start until it cools. Any idea what that could be? Um, one, of one of two things. Either A, kind of unlikely, it could be your um, the, the coil for it, but more than likely, it is a fuel pump that is starting to die. I've seen it before. I mean, they'll run and run and run, but you cut them off, and then when you turn them back on, they really don't want to get back to that 50 PSI or 52 PSI, I think they should have. You want to be sure? Put a pressure tester on it and uh, see what she reads, especially under load. Dirch7 had asked me, do you put Loctite or some type of thread locker on a helical? It's not required, and depending on, you know, I like time search better than helicals, but if I had to use a helical, yeah, I probably would. That's just a personal preference. You know, some people vote against it. I don't have a problem with it. Um, in certain cases, I don't. If it's inside something that's going to get really hot, like an exhaust um, exhaust stud or something like that, I usually don't because it's just going to flow out. <laughs> so what's the point? <clears throat> Daryl Summers, will a rectifier, if bad, not give spark to the spark plugs? That's typically not the way it works. Um, your rectifier, that is just in charge of converting an AC signal into a, DC, a stable DC voltage. So it shouldn't have anything to do with uh, um, not giving a spark. Although, usually you've got your 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 stator wire, and then you also have a uh, usually a pickup coil in there, and that is telling it when to fire. So that if that if those two harnesses are intermingled where they shouldn't be, yeah, I can believe that. But can a rectifier call it not to give the spark? Probably not, unless it's just not charging, and then. Uh, then the battery, the, the voltage is too low. So could it? Probably not. I think it's going to be something else. <clears throat> Gary, Gary had asked me, um, we made an error on our Razor RZR900 and reverse polarity on a battery. Oops. 
We heard a fireworks kind of sound and that was it. We put the battery in correctly and our ZR starts up but runs, but it's not charging. Do you think we damaged anything else aside from the stator or the rectifier? More than likely you took out the regulator rectifier, would be my bet. Um, it probably didn't like that at all. <laughs> the stator, I guess it's possible. Um, if you would go to our Razor 900 uh, videos and I'll show you how to do a, a live test on the stator measuring the AC voltage. I can't remember what it's supposed to be or the range. If I remember correctly, it's somewhere in between 25 and 45 volts AC and you can take a peek at it that way. All right, Kings of Seven Court. The problem I have is minor. Okay, but annoying. They usually are. <laughs> Because it seems like something is not right. Uh, my X, wow, my XR250 starts fine when cold, sometimes the first kick. Starting at hot, it is more difficult and starts most reliably, reliably with a half choke. What does this mean? All right, would you believe I had an XR250? Bought it brand new in 1979. <laughs> One of two things is probably going on more than, uh, more than likely. Now, your valves, they could be out of adjustment, but what's kind of uh, got me interested is that it'll start with a half choke. That tells me that it may be a partially clogged or not adjusted correctly uh, pilot jet. I would look at that first and then go from there and go up to the valves and see what they, uh, see what they look like. They may be a little bit on the tight side. Typically, when they're on the tight side, there is more... It's typically more difficult to start it when it's cold. So it's the exact opposite of what you're running into. My vote at this point is probably the, the pilot jet not being adjusted correctly or partially stopped up. Hmm. Right, well, that's it for last week. Let's see what all y'all have got for me this week. Oh, yeah, we got a bunch of good ones. Darren G., greetings from Canada. Great live show. Great to see. Uh, great how-to videos, John. Well, thank you, Darren. That means a lot. Jonathan. How's it going, Jonathan? Hey there, John. Hope all is good. Any tricks of the trade for jammed air fuel mixture screws on an ATV carburetor? <sighs> Some type of penetration fluid. You really can't put a, a torch on those to... You really don't want to put a torch on them to try to heat them up. Yeah, you can use a heat gun, but I don't think that'll get hot enough. Uh, as far as which um, penetrant to use, I mean, you've got the regulars like PB Blaster and WD-40. Now, there is one that Maxima makes, and I think I see it on the shelf. Let me go grab it. this the other day. I'm glad I didn't run the wire through my shirt. Maxima makes this MPPL. Um, it's my go-to. I, I started using it a couple of years ago and I've been really impressed with it. I mean, it's maybe PB Blaster got it going first, but when I use this stuff, let it sit overnight, most of the times so it'll it'll break free, whatever it happens to be. So I'd say give that a shot. May want to pull the uh, the carb off the machine, lay the carb on its side, to where you can spray down in there and let it sit overnight, not just let it you spray in there and let it run out. Although if you just want to keep squirting it in the side every you know couple hours, that would work as well. <clears throat> Darren G, do you ever work on snowmobiles? Just curious. No, I never have. I'm, would you believe I've never even ridden one, nor have I ever snow skied. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a surf bum more than anything. I want to be out on the water, so can't do it all. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll actually sling a leg over one of those machines. Looks like fun. Jonathan also said, oh, Jay, <clears throat> hey, another Canuck saying, hey, what's up, brother? How's it going, Jonathan? And y'all up in the great white north, although it's... Seems to be a little bit smoky up there lately. Hopefully that's not affecting you too, too badly. Larry Clevenger, installing a new clutch on a 2005 Yamaha R6. The main basket with the drive gear attached has some play in it after installing it to torque to spec center nut with the inner clutch basket. Normal or no? All right, let me read that again. The main basket and the drive gear attached has some play 
in it uh, after installing torque to spec center nut. I don't think that's supposed to have play in there, Larry. Um, you didn't leave out a uh, a uh, spacer in the backside of it. So if memory serves and has one, um, if you'll go to um, our playlist and go to our R6 build, I, uh, when we did the 636 build, one of the videos is uh, us installing the clutch. Go in there and look at that one and because I've had everything taken apart and uh, that'll uh, let you know what was supposed to be in there. Uh, also, you can just go to the website and uh, look at our exploded parts diagrams and it's going to give you a picture of how things uh, come apart and more importantly, how they go back together. So take a look at those two things. But yeah, I, I don't think you're supposed to have play when uh, pulling on the rear basket. I mean, that, 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 that should be there. I mean, that should be there. DGC, we nerd. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, G. DGC. Lance, thanks for the video on the GXR fork video. Came in super great and helped out a lot. Well, that is why we are here. We love hearing that, Lance. Glad it worked out for you. How'd you like having to hold those springs down? Wasn't easy, was it? <laughs> Dion Pearson's Boss Skaggs. Dirty Lowdown is the jam. Well, you should say that. Oh. Getting fired up for it. <laughs> Oh, I can't wait to go see that guy in concert. I've been listening to him for decades. <laughs> I'm probably going to get a copyright infringement for paying, playing that a whole four seconds. Well, I've paid for his music in multiple formats over the years. He should leave me alone. Going back to records, eight tracks, cassettes, and then CDs, and now digital. So come on, <laughs> give me the three seconds. <laughs> Luke Venti, my Polaris 850 2017. Squeak, squeaking no, no noise in the back, help me. Um, more than likely, it's just your suspension points need to be uh, need to be greased, and that one should have Zerk fittings for it. Oh, this next guy, he's nothing but trouble. Brantley Tally, can't imagine who this is. Want to sign a BMW K 1100 Cafe Racer to increase increase the sale price? Celebrity says, "Sure, actually, I'll be down there next weekend uh, to bring you your toy, the Fiat." So yeah, I'll autograph it for you. <laughs> Why not? Kerm, how's it going, Kerm? John, really having a problem, really having problems with bleeding my front brake on my trails trials bike. Can you recommend a decent bleeding kit? Um, my weapon of choice is to use one of those uh, vacuum type uh, bleeding setups. You just connect it to your bleeding valve uh, and a hose to it, and it just pulls the fluid straight down. I mean, uh, Mighty Vac has a couple of different ones, either ones you can run from a compressor or hand operated one. Man, I've got too much arthritis in my hands for that. So, you know me, I'm going to go for the air compressor model. Montgomery Noble, I have a 2017 Raptor 700R that had a failed piston. I replaced the piston, got a brand new cylinder piston rings, timing chain, etc. After the rebuild, the engine, when cold started, doesn't smoke, but once it warms up or idling for about three to five minutes, it starts to smoke small amounts when driving or revving, not when idling. Could this be a valve issue? where the valves aren't fully sealed. It's been driven for several hours and broken in, but the smoke hasn't decreased uh, as it is the same. Well, I think you nailed it, Montgomery. Uh, more than likely the, um, well, I'm kind of curious, why did the other piston fail? Was it lack of lubrication? If that was the case, you know, if the, if the piston wasn't getting enough oil, then the, your valve train is gonna go through a rough time as well. So um, hopefully it's just something as simple as uh, the valve seals. And if not, you may have to uh, you know, replace either the guides or the, the head itself. But yeah, it sounds like you're circling around it. It's going to be something wrong with the valves. You may, Well, can you do a leak down test to really tell? Well, that would probably, yeah, go ahead and do a leak down test on it. And that'll tell you if the, the rings are seated correctly or we've got a, a problem with the, the, valve, the valve guides or the valve seals. 
Chris R. How's it going, Chris? Hi, John. Does anyone ever ride that little red scooter in the back? <laughs> we'll be testing out the spark arresters, uh, arresters next week. I'll ask if it reduce power. I asked if it would reduce the power or not going to part that requires them. If you lose anything, it's not going to be much. Um, and especially if you're going to be in a, in a park. Yeah, don't be that guy that catches the place on fire. This it's not worth that tenth of a horsepower you're probably going to lose. Does everybody, anybody ever ride that red scooter in the back? That one is actually ready to ride. I have not ridden it, or nor has it been ridden since around July of 1977, somewhere in there. That's when it developed a problem in the in the rear axle, the rear hub. I've replaced everything, rebuilt it, repainted it, but I've never put fuel back in it and restarted it, although I'm considering doing that. And I rebuilt the 73 that I have recently, so I'm thinking I, I may have to bring the uh, the set, the 68, that's what that is, back to life. But no, it has not been ridden in a long time, but it, it is, um, it will be good enough to go into the Barroom Museum. It is uh, cl as close to perfect as I can get it, so. Maybe I need to use the thing instead of just letting it be yard art, so to speak. Who knows? A couple of weeks, I may roll it out here after I've got it running and fire it up. Y'all want to see that happen? I think why not? 888 Moto John, I have an 08 CBR 600 RR ABS. Do you know what the fork oil capacity is for fork, uh, each fork? Not off the top of my head, but Hank, if you will make a note of that, I can look it up for 888 Moto, and I can lead off that with um, next week's uh, Q&A. Sound like a deal? All right. Scroll down a little bit more. Dean Pearson. Hey, John, got a Suzuki DRZ400 motorcycle that, bog that bogs very hard and even will stall when pulling through the mid-range in third or fourth. One, two, and five seem relatively fine. Any thoughts? That's odd, just third and fourth. That's usually the meaty part of the uh, the torque curve. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. Well, it's going to be a carburetor issue. I, I find it hard to believe that um, it, your transmission is making the uh, the top end bog down. I've just never, never heard of uh, anything like that happening. So it's going to be a, a fuel issue either. It sounds like it's probably, probably not getting enough because usually third and fourth, that's when your gear ratio is matching your 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 torque curve of the engine the best uh, for forward momentum and uh, it's just running out of steam running out of fuel so i think you're a little bit light on the main jet so i'd say let's uh bring it up a, or down a size and uh get some more fuel in there <laughs> brantley sally says well i'll try to buy a bike that you guys sell parts for next time that would be nice wouldn't it <laughs> you had to go buy something we carry absolutely nothing for, and nobody else does either. How's the how's it looking as far as selling that one? So I think you've got a 540 you've got your eyes, eyes on, don't you? You know how I feel about that one. <laughs> Outrageous penalty. Hello, John. Greetings from Switzerland. Hello. I haven't been there forever. Um, where did I go in Switzerland that left such an impact on me? Lake Lake Lucerne. I was there in 19, 1986 at the Hotel Seaberg. You ever been there? Beautiful, beautiful place. Unbelievable. And uh, Tracy Yvonne Smith, if you're out there, hello. <laughs> All right. Uh oh, I've got something. It looks to be in Russian. <laughs> I can't tell. Guys, we're going to have to get that one uh, translated. Uh, Hank, if you would screenshot that and uh, we'll use whatever translator and uh, we'll try to get it answered for him. Kerm, cheers, mate. Cheers to you. Outrageous penalty. One question. I do have weird. I have to do weird gymna gymnastics to get parts from Partzilla because I live in Switzerland. Remind me later. Why is that company? Uh, why is it that the company does not ship parts here? I thought we did. Um, let me find out, and uh, I'll get you an answer for that. But I thought we did. I, th I don't think there was any restrictions, so we'll see. 
Josh Simmerberg. How are you doing, Joshua? If the red bike in the back is up for sale, I'll be ready with a flatbed and a check. Sorry, I can't sell that one. That was the first motorcycle I ever rode. I was four. My feet were that far away from the pegs. I just ride around in circles in the backyard in first gear. When I got ready to get off, just start blowing the horn. Dad would walk up next to me and I would you know, hop off. So, nope, can't sell it. Can't do it. <laughs> now, well, now, after I'm through with it, I'll end up with Brantley. So if you and Brantley want to work a deal, well, uh, I'll leave that to y'all because I won't be here and I won't care. Although I may haunt him if he sells it. <laughs> 888 Moto. Thank you, Sue. Well, thank you. Not a problem. Montgomery Noble, thanks for the advice. The old piston broke at the wrist pin. Oh, and pivoted Ooh, into the cylinder at the top of the cylinder, destroying the old cylinder. Oh, yeah, I bet. Um, I'll start doing a leak down test on it soon. Good. Let me know. I have, okay, that's I think that's the translation. Uh, I have a Honda VTX 1800 motorcycle. Great machine, by the way. I had a 1300. A lot of, lot of fun. Um, and oh, the, the translation continues. Thank you for your lessons and that you share your rich and deep knowledge or, or experience. Well, you're very welcome, sir. I'm not even going to attempt to uh, uh, pronounce your name. Hope you're doing well. Brantley says, uh, it should be getting the title soon. So finally, will be listed shortly. Good. Larry Clevenger, on the 2005 rear clutch basket, can the needle bearings be removed without dropping the oil pan in the oil drive chain? Just pull the inner clutch basket and the back with the drive gear. I, gosh, dog, it's been so long. Um, Larry, I think so, but I did that engine so long ago. Um, go back and, uh, and watch me when I put it together, because that's what I would have to do. I, I, they all start to meld together after a while. But um, Hank, make a note of Larry's question, and I'll go back into the, uh, the service manual on that and see if I can find out, because I can't come up with it um, off the top of my head. Josh Simberg, hey, 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 it deserves to be in the hands of a tally man. Well, I agree with that, but I, you know how I feel about your family. Uh, the, they are my family as well. <laughs> oh, okay, all kind of family members in the chat today. Y'all keeping me on my toes. <laughs> you probably need to. Hmm. Steven, New Zealand. Hi, John. Yamaha Grizzly 700. At what hours would you look at replacing the piston? Cheers. Oh, I don't think there's really a uh, an hour time for that, Steve. I mean, if you just run them until they start losing a little, little bit of compression or starting to uh, maybe hear some piston slap in there. I mean, as long as you uh, keep your fluids changed in that thing and the oil change frequently, I mean, it's going to last a long time. It, it's not like a, um, a, a super performance. I mean, it is a performance engine, but it's certainly not like a, a race engine where they're, they're, they're they their performance falls off after after X amount of time. But um, I wouldn't even think you'd need to look at that until you hit, I don't know, 1,000 hours, maybe. Then I'd be curious. At least do a compression test on it. But don't let that, don't chase that rabbit because most of the time you're just looking for a big difference because the I've used like three different gauges and had a 10% difference in between each gauge. So don't fall into that trap. <laughs> I probably pulled apart an engine that didn't need to be once. Once. All right, guys. Looks like I've answered all the questions and caught up with everybody. Good ones today. Today was a fun one. All right, guys. Well, I'm getting ready to sign off. I'm going to shut off the lights in here. Head home, get up early, and head to Atlanta. It's going to be fun. You can't tell I'm excited about this, can you? <laughs> All right, guys and girls. Well, I appreciate everybody coming by and spending a little bit of time with us, sending us some great questions. And if you're part Zilla patrons, we appreciate it because it makes all of this possible. All right, guys, everybody have a great week, a great weekend, and God willing, we will see you next Friday at 3. Y'all take care. <laughs>